for who you were, and one for who you are. Sense the difference between who you were and what you are. And sense the greatness that you're designed to be, and you're releasing it. Okay, come forward. We push. We pull. Center forward. Sit and push. Get the feeling of the center in the hands and the breath of green. Point. Pull. Index finger pointing at index finger, thumb relax. Push. Pull the thumb back. Push harder as you go out. Extend. Pull. Now we go to the side. Out. Extend. Relax the shoulder. Come in. Out to the side. Extend. Pull in. Now, on a daily basis, you don't have to do this many, but I'm making sure you remember it. Extend. And pull in. Okay. Go down. We'll just do one of each. You actually do three. Inhale. Float. Receive. Polish the mirror. Up. Inhale. Watch both hands. Center of the body. Breath and hands agree. Third, bring the white light into the body. Well, to energize, cleanse. The jump goes through the soles of the feet into the ground. We cleanse the outside and the in, so now we're ready for action. Inhale. Let the tension out. That's a cleansing breath. And inhale, now you push. The harder you push, the more you get, but you got to push in your mind, not with your body. And inhale. Now we go forward. Pull in. And we go to the side. Extend. And come back. Okay, bring the hands together. The feet together. Let the hands almost touch, but not quite. Eyes closed. To the inside tip of the nose. Move the fingers or the hands in and out and see if you can't feel an energy flow. We move them closer together and farther apart. We move them front and back. The Chinese call it slow chi. The balanced regulation of this, trip, of this flow through a series of exercises. It's done in Taoist Yoga, and I teach you. This energy is yours, it's infinite, it's always there. You can use the use of self-massage, comb out patterns of distorted intelligence, or it can be used to therapeutic touch. The more you do the exercises, the greater the feeling, the greater the reserve, it's better to do the exercises five minutes a day than 40 minutes every other day. You can do just one exercise or you can do them all. Now, I would like you to take the exercise that you liked most or felt most comfortable to, to you and do that exercise of the six that we just did. Pick one and do it. Begin. Do it unusually well. Pay attention to quality. Mingle the feelings. Do it as slowly as you can, but without strain. Your purpose is to get as smooth and as relaxed as you can. 
any tension that's created is an imbalance in the energy flow, and you use the sense of breathing in the coolness and letting go of the moist, sticky heat to release that tension, to release that obstacle, to let go of the old self. One for who you were, one breathing cycle for who you were, one breathing cycle for who you are, and sense one for who you shall become. And sense the greatness that you felt when you were a child. It was always there. Release the obstacles to its expression. Become childlike. Good, do a nice job. Okay. Can you feel it that way? One can't wear one of the other. They're all the time? Strange thing happens. In, okay, now we're going to talk a little philosophy. Now we're going to get into some little meditation. Okay, does anybody have any questions about anything we've done so far? Okay. The purpose of meditation, the last meditation is an active state, the next one is a passive state. What we're going to do is a little bit of a Tibetan thing. We're going to actually go through a series of things. And there are going to be some things that might be, don't feel like your cup of tea. I'm going to start from an easy thing to do, and I'm going to get a little bit more difficult. Whenever something starts that you feel like it's difficult, revert back to the last thing that was easy and stay there, okay? Because we've got different people here for slightly different reasons. So let's, uh, let's see how far we can go. Okay, now. Your mind can only think about one thing at a time. Okay, anybody who is here who is totally satisfied with every facet of their life, every facet, everything, okay, raise your hand, every facet of your life. Okay, so we all could improve, right? If you raise your hand, you become the teacher, I sit down. <laughs> okay, because we all have something that we sort of feel a certain emptiness, a certain lack of something. And the purpose of the meditation is to give you peace of mind. Real peace of mind, not a false thing, real thing. An immediately verifiable thing. It's always there for you. Now the problem is the mind can only think about one thing at a time. And whatever you think about expands. It's called uh, lateral inhibition. The mind can't think about two things at once. It has a tendency when you're thinking about something and you're on it like this, and now something new comes in that's attractive. This comes in. And you're kind of going like this in your mind. It starts to feel a little bit like juggling. Okay, then somebody gives you a call who you're having a relationship with. Oh, they've got to have that. So you end up with one more thing. That's, you feel like you're juggling all these balls. And there's a certain sense of desperation, but you don't want to let any one of them go. If you drop one, you have the tendency of dropping them all. Okay? Now, that type of thinking, as I said before, has never brought one person peace of mind in the history of mankind, or womankind for that matter. Now, lateral inhibition. If you are not happy with your results, this is real simple stuff, but it can give you peace of mind. It has brought numerous people, thousands of people, illumination, and everybody is capable of it. It's just a matter of going through a set of circumstances with a certain perspective, and you can achieve the illumined state. If you're not happy with the results, 
Well, what are the what are the ancestors of result? What are the ancestors of result? What are their ancestors? Where do results come from? Okay, let's keep it real simple. Let's say action. Okay? You do a good action, it predict, predicts a good result. You do a bad action, it doesn't predict a good result. Lucky sometimes, but on, on average, fair in general. Now, where do actions come from? Thoughts. Okay? So, if you want good results, you want good actions, then you've got to have good thoughts. Whatever you think about experience, if you have what they call a state of judgment, when you like something or don't like something, you're in that comparison and contrast mode that cannot bring you peace of mind. So the purpose of meditation is to suspend judgment, to suspend that concept of being player and coach at the same time. Whatever you think about, expands. You like something, you don't like something, or I'll be happy when. Or it's these conditions that come from outside of you to tell you how you're doing versus knowing from the inside out how you're doing. It's the purpose of meditation. Okay? It predicts the elimination of the root cause of disease. Change of thought. Change of thought. You relieve the stress. The tension is the precursor of disease in the body. You try to let the tension go. Whatever you can find, let it go. Whatever you can find, let it go. Now, how are we doing on conditional thought and unconditional thought? Have we been through that? Have you been through that with these people? Okay. Contractual thinking. Okay, we're going to just going with some philosophy. Indulge me for a minute, okay? I don't ask you to, to agree or disagree. The purpose of this is so that you never feel like a victim. You know, you, you go through things, you go, why me? Why me? Why did this happen? Dry clean is closed today. You know, this has happened. There's a cloud over Muncie. <laughs> Why me? Why is this happening? Well, it's always going to be something happening. Conditional thinking is a bad bargain. Here's why. So is the philosophy goes. Now, I'm not saying I agree or disagree with any of this. I'm presenting a philosophical line of thought from what they say I'm supposed to be an example of. Who knows? Okay. So. What did I just say? I just went into a loop. Conditional thinking. Okay. It's a bad bet. Yeah, come and go. Okay. Conditional thinking. If I do something for you and I expect you to do something in return, it's kind of like a contract. If I do something for you and you do it, well, it's what I expected, so that doesn't really give me happiness. If I do something for you and you don't do what I expect, then I notice that, and that brings me pain. So either I'm neutral or I get pain by having expectations in a contract, in a deal, in an emotion, in a relationship. Unconditional thinking, which is said to cut through the, the, the player-coach relationship, is I give you something, and I don't expect a thing to happen. If I give you something, nothing personal, okay? If I give you something and nothing happens, well, I didn't expect anything to happen, so there's no disappointment. But if I do something and something returns, oh, now I'm noticing nothing but the good. So I go from being neutral and only getting bad to being neutral and only getting something good. So you have a certain unconditional quality. And it's said that the purpose of the existence is to learn to give and receive unconditional love, unconditional relationships. And that entire stock of circuit, which is brings you peace of mind, which enables the health to improve at any point. Okay? That's the philosophical basis basis for this. If you have trouble suspending judgment, then understand that it is going to be difficult to ever achieve a peace of mind. Because nobody's ever been able to do it. Now there are several ways of doing this. Some of them are more suited to your personality. So we're going to go through a bunch of different ones. Okay? And if, call it all baloney, the most important thing is, well, not the most important thing, but the first benefit is, ah, you get nice and relaxed. You can always get nice and relaxed. And you'll find that things don't get to you. 
you know, things, you know, sometimes it's a little bit mm -hmm. gets to you, right? Well, the shift is all of a sudden those minor things don't get to you. They don't affect you. All right. I have my will. Let me cover this. I have my will, and I have this problem. I can take my will, and I can go after this problem, and I can pound it down, and I can master this problem. But something else will come up that will draw my attention sooner or later, a relationship or whatever, and my attention and my focus goes up over here. Pain comes from fear. There's only two emotions, love and fear. Fear is only a lack of or a feeling that you won't have love. Okay, fear and love. Beating this fear. You're worried about this fear. You beat it down. Got to pay the mortgage. Got to find this, this relationship or whatever. Okay, I got to give for all the right reasons, but I got to keep this fear in place. As long as your mind is focused on it, you can overcome it, but different things start to happen in your life. So when your attention focuses to something else, this starts to expand. It's said that the fear grows in the void. The first principle is to sense all the things that are empty in your body, your mind, your emotion. And because there's nothing there, nothing there, just fill it. Fill it with love, fill it with joy, fill it with compassion, fill it with forgiveness. But starve the negative. If I try to overcome this negative, It's like going on a diet. Sooner or later, I stop going off the diet. So we talked about a lifestyle change rather than just a quick fix, right? If I keep trying to beat this thing down, I'll beat it down, but when I change my attention, it starts to grow again. It grows from a lack of attention. So if you fill what you sense to be a void, you, by a feeling rather than a thinking, you circumvent this process of moving your attention over here and having this grow up, and then you've got to go back and pound it down again. It feels okay for a while. Take your attention off of it, and it starts to grow again. And then you start to feel like, well, how do I get rid of this thing? I'm trying to do the right thing, but this is important that I help this person over here. You're trying to do the right thing, but the wrong thing is happening because you're not achieving peace of mind. The purpose of the meditation that we're going to finally do is that the fear gets starved. It gets starved because you fill the void. You have a certain expansion principle, which will be the last meditation that we get to. Does that sort of make sense? Is that sort of, okay, it's, it's, it's simple, but it's not simple. It's simple, but it's not simple. If you try your will, you'll do okay for a while, but when you take your will off of it, all of a sudden, you're in a stuck in the human predicament. The end of every beginning, at the end of every remember, there's a forget. At the end of every forget, there's a remember. That's what it is with a player on a couch. Okay? So rather than trying to juggle all these things and having these things grow and feeling like you're outnumbered, or why, why is this happening to me? I've got too much to handle. It's said that that's the wrong form of intelligence and no one has ever in the history of man found peace of mind that way. Okay? Okay, you can change position anytime you want. Okay, close your eyes. Your job is to relax. Right, teach your technique. What you can do. Anytime. First thing we're going to do is do water breathing. Water breathing is simply to inhale long and exhale with a short sigh. Okay, you do this for about three minutes. And you'll change the hormone balance in your brain. And you'll secrete some stuff that makes you feel good. So you inhale nice and long, and then you exhale through the mouth with a short sigh. I'm going to ask you to do this for about a minute. Eyebrows, or you can look at a point on the horizon with your eyes closed, or you look at a point on the inside. 
inside tip of the nose, but with the eyes closed, you'll have a tendency of feeling things better. breathing go naturally. Just let it do whatever it wants to do. And sense all the places on the floor. And let your weight drop. Your job's to relax. Let as much fall as you can. Let yourself just melt into the floor. And again, become aware of your breathing. And believe, breathe below your navel so the navel rises and falls as you breathe. You get a better exchange of oxygen. Become aware of the coolness. You breathe in. And this time I'd like you to hold the inhale for about five seconds and then you exhale. And as you exhale, you find any kind of tension in your body, mind, or emotion. You simply need to think of opposite. Breathe in the coolness. You hold the breath for about five seconds, whatever feels comfortable. And then you breathe out with the exhale being longer than the inhale. Or have them about the same. actually breathing in relaxation. Hold it for five seconds, allow the relaxation to go wherever it needs, and you breathe out tension. Breathing in relaxation. Hold it for about five seconds, and you breathe out tension. Let it go. This is your personal time. Your time to be your own best friend. Very bad. And experiencing the difference in the feeling between relaxation and tension. Now, as you breathe in, since you're breathing in energy, any form of energy that you need anywhere in body, mind, or emotion. You hold it for five seconds. You allow that energy to go where it's needed. And as you breathe out, you breathe out any sense of tiredness. Any sense of tiredness, you let it go. Breathing in energy. Hold it for about five seconds. Breathe out any sense of tiredness. Breathe in confidence and security. Sense it coming into your body, mind, and emotions. You hold it for about five seconds and then breathe out any sense of fear. Any kind of fear. Let it go.
out the more sticky heat. Any kind of tension, just let it go. your comfort level. We're going to go to the next exercise. We're going to ask you to stay whatever is comfortable or return to it. As you breathe in, sense that you, when you breathe in, you say to the word, you say the word to yourself, thinking, any kind of thought that comes to your mind, any kind of sensation, you label the thought as thinking. When you breathe out, you say the word to yourself, dissolution, dissolve it, dissolution. As you breathe in, say the word thinking. Witness and observe whatever your brain is thinking about. And then you breathe out and you let it dissolve, you let it go. This dissolves the player in the touch. simply return, label the thought, think it. to go to the level that you feel comfortable. You may return to thinking of opposites. Or you can try this new level. Now I'm going to ask you to do combined breathing, which means you're going to breathe through your nose and your mouth simultaneously. The tongue is going to form little dish-like shape so that when you inhale, you feel the air run along the roof of the mouth. At the same time, you feel the air go in the nose. Think only of the 
feeling. Feel the feeling from in. Hold the breath for a count of four or five, or however it feels comfortable. And then you breathe out, again, breathing out the nose and the mouth simultaneously. Think only of the feeling. Feel the air rush along the roof of the mouth and in the nose simultaneously. You suspend the breath for a count of four to five and then exhale. Again, experiencing the feeling of the air rushing along the roof of the mouth and out the nose equally. Any emptiness. You said that your body is 99.999% space. Void. Emptiness. Just like out of space. Fill all the empty space. in your mind, all the empty spaces in your emotions, let them be filled with something good, with joy, with love, with passion, with forgiveness, with serenity. Pick one thing. As you inhale, Feel yourself drawing strength down around where your hand is. Hold it for about five seconds, and as you exhale, feel the serenity, love, whatever good feeling you've chosen. Let it fill the space and expand. Fill up first the inside of your body, and then let it surround you. like you are breathing in strength to this good feeling. As you breathe out, sense the feeling expand. Think only of the power.
behind and below your navel. Outside, a quarter inch. Let it be like the sun, brilliant and bright. As you inhale, allow the sun to become brighter and stronger. As you exhale, let the brightness and light expand. Exhale, you feel the light and the good feeling expand. Each time a little larger. And each time the light develops more relaxation. going to go backward through the technique. Pick the one that is most meaningful for you, most meaningful for you, and stay with it. Whichever one is most meaningful for you. you have the sense of breathing in something good, letting it be a sun. As you exhale, it expands. Good feeling. You have the combined breathing, a breathing in the nose and the mouth simultaneously, breathing in for a count of three or four, three or four or five, feeling the air run along the roof of the mouth and in the nose simultaneously. The 
in, the hold, and the exhale are the same length. yourself, dissolution, dissolve, let it go. Any thought that comes, any sensation, label it, master it. This will allow you to master your thoughts. Coolness is relaxation. You hold the breath for as long as it feels comfortable. And then you breathe out the tension at the moist, sticky heat. Let your intuition guide you to the best technique for you. Learn to trust your intuition. Breathing, feel the breathing come in and go out. That's one breathing cycle for who you were. obstacles to that flow of greatness and abundance. And 
barely open the eyes, then close them again. Be gentle with yourself, do not rush. Barely open the eyes, then close them again. Sense the master awakes. The better self. Spend a full minute, barely opening the eyes and close them again. Sense yourself coming back to this time, coming back to this room, coming back to this now. Fresh. Anything fast. Don't be in any rush to do anything. It's about being your own best friend. Good luck for coming for some reason. Come. You don't know why. For some reason.
some reason, it's easy for other people to do right by you without asking. their own. Some people still like it. Pardon me? See, if you fall asleep, that's just a level two. That's your body saying, hey, let me rest. And it's perfectly acceptable. Perfectly acceptable. In the old days, they used to be there with a stick. <laughs> okay? But uh, I don't think that's as important. There's too many people are too stressed out. And if your body just says, hey, pay attention to me. Put the mind off. Right. It's all kinds of subtle levels that are happening all the time. All kinds of subtle levels. Okay. Which one did I like? Yeah. I like the, the one the thinking, the thought. But it was... I know I said that, but one more time. Yeah, you know, the solution. Which one? Good. Which one did you like, though? You didn't. I just got here at the end. Yeah. Yeah. said that with the labeling, if you like that one, the labeling, when you can take a thought and step back from it and call all those thoughts just thinking, you know, the problem is usually when at the end of one idea there's the beginning of the next one, that's said to cut that so that you can calm the mind. Okay, each one of those techniques has all not exactly the same, but they do get you relatively to the same place. The easiest thing to remember, if you can't remember any of them, it's just that you breathe in and you breathe out sensing opposites, whether it's coolness and heat, whether it's relaxation and tension. Okay, that will calm the, the, the brain. The one that gets to the mind, which is greater than the brain, that's the timeless truth, is the one that suspends the thought or the expansion. Those two to get you to where two, you can understand two becoming one, you know, one is universal, okay, whatever that means to you, you know, it's all, whatever it means to you, which one works best for you? The, just relaxing and breathing in, it gave the, like a tingling through the whole body, you let everything relax. Did anybody sense not being able to tell the difference between the inside and the outside of their body? You lose track of where it begins and ends? Yes. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. You're encouraged to take whichever one works for you and don't try to judge it for 30 days, but do it. Do it for 30 days, and at the end of 30 days, sense the benefit. Don't try to sense the benefit beforehand. Just give it a try for 30 days. And you're better off doing it for 5 minutes every day than 40 minutes every other day. You can do any form of meditation, essentially three times a day. You know, when you first get up, when the, the, the sun is high in the sky, and then at the end of the day. But you're, uh, it's a good idea to stay away from any time that you eat simply because you're slowing down the body and the body, you know, when you're eating is trying to send energy to take care of that stuff. So you want to stay away from meditating an hour before or after you eat. And then, uh, then you'll find that uh, oftentimes the effect is fairly profound. Now, the next step would be you take that breathing and you, then you breathe in the coolness, you breathe out the moist heat. Thinking the solution. The sun, feel it grow, I feel it get brighter, and you feel it expand. So you take whatever the, the, the one that worked for you, even if it's relaxation. Breathe in, keep breathing, and relax. And you mingle that perception with the feeling of still moving the center, the feeling of the breath coming in, the feeling of the hands, the breath, and the center changing together and then you're creating dynamic, synergistic effect that predicts success. No guarantee to life. Predicts success. Okay? So that's about uh, 5,000 years of uh, trial and error, integrating the body, mind, and emotions into one.
one vibration. And uh, any questions? Sequence one more time. Do you remember them all? Remember them all? You want to do it one more time? Okay, we'll come up. Those legs. Yeah, ooh. Here we are. If you feel like you're in a swimming pool up to your up to your neck, you did a good job. <laughs> you know, if you kind of feel a little bit like this, you know, ooh, ooh. That's good. That's good. All right. Now the most important thing, you remember this can be shaking in the legs, this can be tingling in the hands. The important thing is the center of the body and all the exercises. Back, you feel like you're about to sit in a chair, and you bring the pelvis forward, the weight flat on the feet, and then you go up. The integrity of the circle is more important than how large the circle is, so that you feel it going in a circle the whole time. Okay? And you add the hands with the breathing. So the hands come up, the center comes forward, hands reach the height, breathing reaches the height, the center reaches the height. Suspend the breath. And you exhale. The exhale is longer than the inhale for the spirit to overcome the ego. So this is the song of rising and falling hands, and you do this three times. And one more time. Feel the change. Integrate the feeling of the change happening together. The second exercise is polishing the mirror. Spread the fingers. Keep the fingers pointed up as much as you can. And remember, you're watching both hands simultaneously as you extend, doing the unbendable arm through all the fingers and also out the palms straight forward the whole time. So we're stretch so that you feel the spine stretch. And then watch the hand as the breathing goes out. And then one more time, you inhale. Center goes up. And exhale. Exhale is longer than the inhale. Third is the white light invocation of the light comes from heaven, cleanses and energizes the body, mind, and spirit, cleanses, energizes, and heals. So that you're working on the outside of your body, combing on the previous one, now you're using the palms to comb the inside of the body. And three is a good number, sensing one for who you were, one for who you are wonder who you shall become. And then to create action. Now you can do any one of these exercises and only that one. And you can get as much benefit as doing all of them. If you find one is sort of interesting to you today, then you do that. It might be different tomorrow. Whatever is interesting, the time you're doing it is the one that you follow. You listen to the exercise and you listen to your body. You don't dictate, say, I've got to do 10 of these. Okay, now I've got to do 10 of these. Now I've got to do 10 of these. Okay, that's got nothing to do with it. That's a long form of intelligence. Okay, now you take a cleansing breath. You sense the tension in your body, then you let out all the tension that you sense. Now you inhale, and push with the palms, and push harder as you sit. And you go up and down three times. That's one. Inhale, center comes forward. Now sit, push down.